lovely, lovely imps, it is time for the long-awaited review of The Empire Strikes Back. That's right. The Empire Star Strikes Back, a uh, absolutely incredible Star Wars film that we have to talk a whole bunch about. I kind of let the cat out of the bag right away because I do love The Empire Strikes Back. It's been a million years since I've seen it. But let me tell you, I have a lot to say about The Empire Strikes Back. So, if you are ready for the most amazing Star Wars reviews, the most amazing media reviews that you've ever seen coming straight from the depths of hell, smack that like button and press subscribe because we're about to jump in. My lovely imps, The Empire Strikes Back is such an awesome film. I can... I can hardly even contain my excitement in how much I want to talk about it. It is it is just uh, amazing. You did not miss the Empire Review. You are here just in time. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Metal in chat says, The Empire Strikes Back, a film so good, you'll want to kiss your sister. It is interesting, of course, that this movie starts very early on with a literal... Uh, uh, brother-sister kiss. Now, of course, they don't know that they're brother and sister. And from what I've heard, they hadn't actually, the writers hadn't actually decided that that was the, going to be the way that it was going to go when they first started making the movie. Like, they hadn't come up with that plot point yet. Um, uh, the idea that, uh, that, that Luke had an unknown sibling uh, was out there, but they hadn't decided that it was going to be Leia yet. Spoilers! Spoilers! Leia and Luke are brother and sister. I know for those of you who've been out of the loop since the, uh, 19-fucking 70s, um, you know, uh, you might, uh, you might get a couple of little spoils there. Um, but, uh, yeah, some, uh, b b b Bazinga! Uh, no, okay, so let's talk about the movie outside of the, uh, incestuous kiss at the very beginning, which, um, you know, they just, they never talk about that again, by the way. It's really funny. Like, for the rest of the series, they just never talk about the fact that that happened. And I think it's because, um, I think it's because, like, it's, it's, it's in the context of the film, it's because, uh, Leia is trying to make Han Solo jealous. You know, at the beginning of the movie, they're being all catty to each other. Han Solo's like, hey, you like me, don't you? But but Leia's like, no, I don't like you. You're gross. Because she's a princess, and he's a uh, scruffy nerf herder. Um, and that's just a bad mix, you know? Except, I guess, well, I guess it is a bad mix. I don't know. It, it's, it, it, later on, they kind of mess it up, and they say that they were a bad couple. But they they're the couple of the original trilogy. That's the... You know, Han, he gets the princess because he becomes brave and a, and a good guy and stops being a scruffy nerf herder. Um, and uh, uh, Luke and Leia don't have a lot of scenes together in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. They have a lot of scenes together in Return of the Jedi. We'll talk about that. Um, we'll get there. Um, isn't Luke quite literally a herder? Uh, he's a moisture farmer, actually. He's not a herder. He's a moisture farmer. Let's get things right, okay? Oh, Jesus. <sighs> anyway. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back is such a fun movie. First of all, because it goes like... It, 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 it decides to go to some of the most diverse environments in the entire Star Wars series all in one film. The movie starts in space, then it immediately goes to uh to to Hoth, which is a a a frozen ice planet, and then it goes to Dagobah, a jungle swamp planet, and then it goes to Cloud City uh on Bespin, which is a a a gas giant where there is no land on this planet. They're just uh, or at least the land is not inhabitable in any way. It's all floating cities. It's wild, okay? That movie, it does Star Wars the best. It's, it's, it's concentrated Star Wars. It's the thing that it, I mean, literally set what people came to expect from Star Wars, which is, wow, alien environments. Wow, cool aliens. Um, look at all of the diversity that you can encounter in this huge galaxy. And 
for that reason, Empire Strikes Back has this, it has this perpetual sense of adventure around it throughout the entire movie. Uh, uh, there is just this feeling that you're on an exciting adventure, more so even than A New Hope, in my opinion, where A New Hope, uh, it, it has all of the sort of like story arcs of you're going on an adventure, but the adventure hasn't really fully started yet in A New Hope. A lot of A New Hope takes place on uh, starships. It's like in ships. So you see the interior of ships, whereas that is not true at all for uh, Empire Strikes Back. In fact, the opening sort of uh, tension of Empire Strikes Back is not a battle. It's not uh, a, a whole, I mean, there's a little bit of tension with the Empire because of the droids that are scanning and everything. And that's why they're out there. That's the driving force for why they're out in the cold. But it's an adventure movie. The temperature is getting cold. Luke got attacked by a scary piece of wildlife. They have to, they have to, you know, their, their animals are dying. Their, their tauntauns, which are basically like snow, snow ostrich horses. Uh, oh no, the tauntaun passed out from the cold. How are we going to survive? How are we going to stay warm and not get eaten in the wild world of Hoth? And it's such a cool way to start it. And it, it's just like, I don't know, it's amazing. It adds this... Uh, it adds the adventure that it sells the message of the first movie where the or, or the promise of the first movie actually not the message the promise of the first movie is like Luke is going on an adventure he's going to become a Jedi Knight and sure enough bam right away you have adventures and I want to contrast this real quick to a movie I reviewed a little bit ago which is Attack of the Clones in uh, uh, in the prequel trilogy the Phantom Menace sets up Anakin Skywalker as he's going to become a Jedi. Same, basically the same arc that we uh, have seen Luke embark on. There, There's parallels there. Obviously, Anakin is literally Luke's father. Spoilers! Um, but if you notice, in Attack of the Clones, the only actual adventure part that you see, you don't actually see. You just hear them talking about it. Uh, uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin are in an elevator and they're like, remember that time you fell into the squawk nest? And it's like, yes, I remember the time I, sca I saved your butt out of the squawk nest and those, and those pesky, uh, wargle gargles were almost about to eat you. And, uh, a nest of gun docks. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't remember what they're called. Uh, and, and it's like, it, it, it's almost like a parody of, 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 of Empire Strikes Back because Empire opens up with nothing, like very little to do with, with the, the Star Wars universe, uh, or, or not, or, or not the universe, so the, the overall arc. There's not much Empire going on. They're out there looking for Imperial droids, maybe, but the real danger, the real threat is is the adventure at hand. The, the, the sun is going down. It's getting cold. There's a monster that knocked you off your horse. Your horse passed out. How are you going to survive and get back to the people that you loved? And uh, it just works really, really well. Uh, and it, it starts the movie off on a relatable tension. Uh, not everyone in the world uh has had an experience by which uh, uh they have been hunted by uh a dark sith knight who flies a scary ship and wields a lightsaber but basically everyone at some point in their life has been in uh in some kind of spooky situation that has to do with the natural world whether it's oh i was camping and my fire went out and now it's really cold and it's raining and we have to uh, and now we have to deal with that or, oh no, there's been a storm and our basement is flooding. These are, these are very, uh, they're cranked up to 11, obviously, but they're very relatable and it's an awesome way to start the film. And then immediately after that, it goes into one of the coolest battles that has ever been in Star Wars ever. Okay. And again, I'm going to contrast this to the middle movie of the prequel trilogy uh, Attack of the Clones, where I explicitly critique that that prequel movie for having the most boring fights and battles that you can imagine. Uh, the battle on Hoth against the Empire is so exciting. It's so 
you're so on the ground. Everything is very visceral. You've got Luke in his little speeder flying between the legs of the giant AT-ATs. You've got close-ups of all the troops being like, oh, we got to get to the cover. Quick, jump into the trenches. Pew, pew. They're all poking out. And then there's those weird little uh, uh, satellite things that are shooting lasers. It, it's like it's it's the the spiritual opposite of everything that happened in Attack of the Clones, where in Attack of the Clones, everything is a wide shot. All you see is like dust and lasers and little specks moving all over the place. In Empire Strikes Back, they go from scary adventure in the wilds directly into you're in the trenches with the rebels. The, the stakes are right in front of you. Luke is like... Luke's guy gets blasted, his friend is like dead and he has to cope with that. He has to get R2 to do stuff. He's like, his ship goes down and he's gotta climb up the, uh, the, the, the at, -AT or I guess he uses like a little rope, but whatever. Uh, just so cool. Just so, so cool. And everything, the, the style is amazing. The snow troopers with their scary looking white masks. Uh, uh, blending in and just seeming to pop out of nowhere with their laser guns. The intimidating AT-AT designs where they move all janky, but they have this weight to them. They have, like, multiple shots of people getting crunched by the AT-AT. Just an amazing level of style and flex uh, uh, that it just, you can never forget it. I, when I was a kid, uh, I remember uh, being totally enraptured by the uh by the the battle on hoth the the whole hoth sequence uh just complete was is like was like burned into my memory as a kid as just like one of the most exciting things i'd ever seen on a on a tv set ever uh it blew my mind i was just like how does it wow and i even to this day when i think about the battle of hoth i still think of it as one of the most exciting uh uh like f fantasy battles that i can think of um and then, of course, you've got this this whole the premise is, of course, that the the rebels know it's a lost a lost fight that they can't save their base. All that they're hoping to do is get enough people to escape. They're sending off. Uh, they're evacuating. They're literally all their troops are running into the ships so they can get one through at a time. Each time that little uh, ion cannon knocks out the uh, blockade shields. Amazing setup. Amazing special effects. Just incredible style uh, 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 on all of the designs and it's it, it's followed it it, it it follows so well with the establishment of stakes uh, uh, from the first major scene or the first major sequence of the film uh, where you know where they're trying to survive in the hostile conditions you get this idea that like it's truly a miserable battlefield because the first the first part of the movie is you understanding just how bad it is on Hoth like also of course there's an, an incredible attention to detail everybody's face is covered in ice they're all red uh, 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 Chewbacca's covered in snow and he's got like icicles hanging off of him just amazing just what an what an incredible uh attention to detail and love that went into the the opening of uh of empire strikes back uh and and of course uh uh after that uh you you move into the rest of the story of the, the story which again uh like i'm trying to remember now is there another battle i don't even think there's another real battle of there's no other big battle in that movie the big battle happens on hoth and then after that you go into uh dagobah which is in a in 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 most movies uh people tend to uh think that like the training montage i mean they do them as a montage usually because training sequences often come off as well let's be honest a little bit boring but in in Empire Strikes Back, not really at all. Uh, to be completely honest, Dagobah is exciting, um, partially because it's such a sudden transition from a uh, a completely barren ice planet to the richest jungle planet that we've ever seen in the series so far. Um, but also 
There's there's like a, a creepy swamp monster. Uh, Luke is immediately in danger. His ship has sunk. It, you think that R2 is going to die, and then he doesn't. Uh, and you're like, oh, thank God. Then he meets this this tiny gremlin. Uh, and, of course, Yoda in, in, the, in the original trilogy is the best version of Yoda that has ever existed. Uh, I kind of hate prequel trilogy Yoda uh, uh, because... <laughs> Because he's he's so not wise in any way. Uh, he in in the prequel trilogy, Yoda just comes off as kind of a a dick. <laughs> like he's just always like, "Oh, you're not as smart as a child." Ch uh, amazing, the brain of a child is, and it's just like, bro, what what's your problem? And he never really gives you any major insights. But in in uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, the time that the time that Luke spends with Yoda is Yoda like act actively training him. He's making him do exercises. He's making him run around with him on his back. He's testing his personality. Uh, from the very moment that Yoda arrives, Yoda is like being annoying and and he's trying to see if he can uh, if he can upset Luke. He's trying to get into Luke's head to figure out what Luke's personality is. Is he going to be quick to anger? Is he going to be cruel? Is he going to be greedy? Um, and you really get the feel that Yoda is a is a a wise a, a wise eight hundred and ninety year old dude or whatever however old he is at that time. Uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Yes, yes. As as Capo in chat points out, the training montage in the hand and the handful of lines we get from Yoda uh, give a better and more meaningful and interesting explanation of, of of Force than anything you get in the entire prequel trilogy. Uh, size matters not. Look at me. Judge me by my size, do you? Hmm. And well, you should not, for my ally is the Force, and a powerful ally it is. Yeah, he goes in. He actually explains what the Force is. That the Force is the connective tissue of the universe. That what binds all living things together, um, you, no matter the the vacuum of space, um, and uh, uh, and of course, yeah, the the X wing, the X wing getting lifted out. Uh, there's this whole struggle between the frustration and fear that Luke has inside of him. Uh, it just Empire actually sells what the Jedi are trying to train or what the Jedi training is supposed to bring out in somebody, which is that the Jedi training is supposed to temper um, the emotions of somebody who is wielding uh, an incredible power that they are supposed to, that in order to understand the power of the force, they have to actually craft their personality. And you get that every, every part of their training with between Luke and Yoda is Yoda trying to, uh, teach Luke to be able to control the most negative parts of himself so that he doesn't lash out in anger, so that he doesn't give up out of frustration, so that he doesn't fall into traps out of fear. Um, and it's illustrated in a micro way. And of course, ultimately, we know where that goes, that Luke is overcome by fear, and it leads to a whole arc, including him um, having to go through some pretty major hardship, uh, hardship that defines the final film of the series. Um, but uh, but it is it is uh, it is incredible and of course uh, I would be remiss to not mention just how great all of the practical effects look on uh, Dagobah the jungle planet that Yoda lives on um, his his little set the little house that he lives on it's it's like the entire time it's the opposite of the problem that was going on in uh, in the Phantom Menace. Where remember how I mentioned that in the Phantom Menace, all of the sets were not built for Liam Neeson, so it makes it look like Liam Neeson is on a on a play like on like a, a play park at all times. It looks like he's like on like a like a playground, um, and that was unintentional, and it shows that it's unintentional because all of the other people don't even fit that well either. It's just really noticeable when they're standing next to Liam Neeson. The opposite happens in this case, where the goal is to sell you that this is where this tiny little green puppet has been living for 
uh, you know, 30 years or 20 years or whatever. That this little puppet has been living in a hole in the wall, and it's not designed to house Luke. Luke has to like crawl down and roll up in every single in every single scene, and all of the utensils are the wrong size for for Luke. Um, and then of course there's the uh, when I was a kid, I found it terrifying, uh, and I'm sure many other people uh, share this. I still think that it's really well done. The uh, the test where where Luke is uh, is basically goes into the uh, goes into this area of the jungle that is full of dark energy and he confronts his deepest fears which of course he doesn't understand at the time uh, he goes into the jungle and is attacked by uh, by Darth Vader or an apparition of Darth Vader and he fights Darth Vader in this like it's like they're fighting in sludge. Some people really complain about the like low frame rate. I actually think the low frame rate works because I think it creates like a uh, a a dreamlike environment uh, where uh, it's like nothing is working properly, but you're too in the moment to know why. I don't know if you've ever had a dream like that, um, but I've had nightmares like that where it's like. Um, you're in a fight, but for some reason, everything is too hard. You can't move quickly enough for some reason. And there's no, I think it works personally. Um, and, uh, and he, he does the fight and then he hits, he hits, uh, 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 Darth Vader in the face only to see, of course, that his own face is inside the helmet. And, uh, you know, the, the, the obvious, you know, message being that Luke's greatest fear, uh, his his deepest concern is that uh, that he will be like his father, that he will fall to the dark side and hurt the people that he loves, that he'll betray his friends, um, you know, and uh, and uh, yeah. and then he went to fight Vader anyway. But keep in mind, uh, mesmerized. That is part of his. That is part of his arc. He wasn't able to learn from it yet. He wasn't, he wasn't, that's the whole thing. And he suffers as a result of that decision because he's being set up. And Yoda was trying to teach him that, hey, this is a trap. Um, you're being lured in by your own fears. Uh, and of course that leads to him actually putting his friends in more danger. Now, thankfully, because he's a heroic character, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't fall to the dark side. He doesn't become completely compromised, but he does end up hurting his friends more as a result of his decision um, mo in multiple ways um, all the way through. And I don't want to spoil, do spoilers for the movie I haven't reviewed yet for Re uh, Return of the Jedi, but in Return of the Jedi, one of the recurring, um, one of the recurring elements is that uh, Vader can sense him wherever he is. And he's, he's not powerful enough in the Force to fully resist the Emperor. So the Emperor can see where he's going. Um, and that puts him and his friends at danger. It literally results in the death of a lot of people um, because, because he is not, he's not prepared enough. He's basically, uh, he's basically walking around broadcasting where he is at all times because he doesn't know how to control his own presence in the Force. Uh, and yeah, so that, I think that it works really, really well. And I think that it, it actually, uh, it actually does have a really great plot throughput, uh, where, you know, what defines Luke is not that he made a mistake, but how he reacted to his mistake, that he learns that, um, that he, that he, he did let himself fall to a trick and he learns to become more wise over time. Um, Yeah. So many themes that the sequels threw away. We're not going to talk about the sequels yet, but we will soon. You guys, I, I'm telling you, you can't wait until I do my sequels reviews. Those ones are going to make a lot of people happy because I have a lot of things to... I have a lot of... Uh, I have a lot of critiques of the sequels, but we'll get there when we get there, okay? Uh, uh, let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about the end of uh, Empire Strikes Back. Now... Something I want to note is that at the point that Luke has this vision, uh, he doesn't even know that Vader is his father yet. But uh, he has been warned that people do fall to the dark side. So his fear, of course, is that, uh, that he will become eclipsed by his own flaws. Uh, and it is a premonition 
of how close he really is to his enemy, his ultimate enemy, Darth Vader. Um, that he doesn't he doesn't have the tools to decrypt yet. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, then of course we have the sort of final sequence of of the of the movie, which is the Cloud City adventure, uh, uh, which is just awesome. Okay, and let me tell you, um, it's great. Okay, Cloud City looks awesome. All of the costumes on Cloud City are awesome. The sets are so stylish. Lando is just so... We love Lando, don't we, everybody? Lando is... Ah! He's so great. Just a... a what a banger character. He's got drip like nobody else. He's got uh, he's got so much swag. He He's constantly putting Han on the back foot. And we love to see it because we all love Han Solo. He's our he's one of our heroes. We love Han Solo, but it's great to see him put in his place for once because Lando has so much more swag than Han than Han Solo. And also, Lando always calls him Han, which is another thing that's fantastic because everybody calls him Han Solo, but Lando for some reason keeps calling him Han. And and they just never they just never address that. It's so good. I I like to think that it's like uh, intentional that he's like he's basically putting his friend down a peg by saying his name wrong. Uh now there is one funny part I have to point out, which is that um <laughs> Uh, Lando, Lando has a robot whose name is Lobot, and uh, <laughs> that is a, that is a Lucasism, if I've ever encountered one, uh, just <laughs> so goofy that they have, that he has a, 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 a robot friend named Lobot, and, uh, but hey, again, even though his name is, he's a robot named Lobot, he also has a cool design, okay, let me show you what, uh, people might forget what Lobot looks like, some of you... Um, but like, he's cool looking. He's got swag. Look at this guy. What a cool looking dude. It's not over the top. It's a very simple thing. He's got these like, they're like, you can see the indents. They're like going, they look like they're going into his head, which is a cool design touch because of course in Star Wars, everything's a little, uh, most things are a little over, you know, uh, over designed. Like, uh. What's the what's that guy? The guy with the little uh, voice thing. Hold on, his guy. He's he's this guy who's got. What are they called? Does anybody know what it was in in the prequel trilogy? The little dude with the this guy. Yeah, here he is. Where did he go here? This guy. Most Star Wars designs are kind of like this. Where oh no, really? You really you really gonna do this to me? Oh you. Bastard. Oh my 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 thing is busted. Oh, that's so annoying this guy right here a Lot of the Star Wars designs are kind of like a lot. Okay, and I like a lot of them Okay, there's some good designs, but a lot of them are kind of a lot So it's kind of cool to see a guy who's just basically a creepy a creepy cyborg with weird shit coming out of his head Okay, it's pretty cool. I Liked the Ewoks wait a second The Ewoks, okay, listen the e hey hey why does that one work but none of these these other ones work what's going on here why do my buttons break i hate it the ewoks okay are fantastic but we're not at we're not at return of the jedi yet so you're gonna have to wait for the ewoks okay Listen, I'm sorry, but the Ewoks are great, okay? Anybody who shits on the Ewoks is going to have to face my wrath, and you'll understand why soon enough. Anyway, the final sequence of uh, of uh, Empire Strikes Back is, of course, awesome. It is, there's intrigue, there's uh, tight hallway laser scenes with explosions and sparks flying everywhere. Um, the set design is amazing. For some reason, they're like they they take Han Solo and they're gonna stuff him into uh, carbonite, and they do it in the most terrifying room that you could possibly imagine. The set that they designed, where they put things in carbonite, it it looks like the most evil place on earth. Which cool rule of cool applies here. I I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. 
uh, the mining room would be so terrifying, but maybe mining is just that evil. After all, it is explicitly stated that Lando is basically running a slave mining operation as a legitimate business, which maybe there's some commentary going on there. Maybe they're trying to say that, hey, Lando, your uh, fancy city uh, has a dark heart um, in the center of it. And I like that. I think that's acceptable. Oh yes, and of course the the uh, the, the 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 famous line uh, between Leia and Han, where Leia says "I love you" and he responds "I know," uh, which is just iconic. Of course, a bold choice, but perfectly in line with Han Solo's character and the confrontation with Vader, which the confrontation with Vader is it's thematically perfect uh remember how i mentioned that like luke suffers because of his decision to stop his training early well that's the prime example isn't it instead of learning about his 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 past from somebody who cares about him yoda or obi-wan kenobi instead he has to learn it from the most evil guy the second most evil guy in the universe and he has to learn it while towering over a gigantic pit in the middle of the, the a, a bottomless pit uh with his arm cut off yeah it's 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 totally messed up it's a horrifying scene and 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 uh, luke is literally like screaming in agony it's uh he pays the price for being uh so careless and it hit and his heart is in the right place he wants to save his friends but the whole point is that yoda is trying to teach him that his first instinct is not always the correct instinct that uh that you can become manipulated if you only trust uh your your first your fear if you only trust your anger if you only trust your hatred you will become misled um and this is the sort of thematic conclusion of that that uh, not only does he lose a hand, but that he finds about his past in the most uh, the most uh, traumatic way that you can imagine. Oh, and of course, yes, Uncle Gumbald, how could I forget? The music. Uh, the score for Empire Strikes Back uh, is the most standout of the entire Star Wars trilogy. Um, it is uh, uh, just incredible from beginning to end uh perfectly uh perfectly matches the the swells and the uh and the the valleys of of action and and contemplation um throughout the film uh the score uh, done by of course john williams was phenomenal um there's just a, it's just awesome and john williams is the goat and of course it is the first film that we hear the imperial march da 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 that's the first movie a lot of people don't know that that's where it first appears it appears first in empire strikes back um incredible just every every moment of this of, of the movie is is like pristinely tuned to just have this music that just carries you throughout the entire film um Empire Strikes Back is an, a phenomenal film. There is just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is a, uh, it is a, uh, an, an adventurous, exciting, compelling. It's exciting from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. It has, it drips swag. Okay, just costumes, sets, special effects, uh, camera work, lighting. Every single aspect of this film is just tuned to make for this just amazing experience. And I love it. I absolutely love the movie. Um, yeah. Oh, also, they, they, give, they, they, they give Vader a moment to shine. In the first movie, you kind of get this. I mentioned this in my hope in my A New Hope review. That in the first movie, you kind of get the idea that, uh, that Vader is really whipped. Not so much in this movie. In this film, uh, 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 Vader is constantly pushing people around. He's wielding his anger and his hate a lot in this movie. And you actually, and he wins. Vader wins. The Empire truly does strike back in The Empire Strikes Back. He, he, he captures all of his opponents. He wounds the only other Jedi in the entire, the only other known Jedi in the entire world. 
Uh, he successfully lures Luke out of his Jedi training, and he also gets to see that Luke is totally unprepared and set up for him to be tempted by the dark side. Just amazing all across the board. Also, uh, something really funny that I want to point out is uh, how how much of a, a random chance it was that uh, that Boba Fett was relevant at all. Uh, some of you will... Uh... <laughs> so, at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader uh, hires a bunch of, uh, a bunch of um, uh, bounty hunters. And all of those bounty hunters, they've tried to, like, make them stick. There's one named Bosk. He's like a lizard. There's a robot named like IG-88 or something. He's like a creepy looking robot that looks like a tower and he has red eyes. He's actually pretty cool looking uh, design. Uh, and then there's Boba Fett. Um, but just so that we're clear, Boba Fett doesn't do anything. <laughs> he doesn't do anything in the entire movie except for like fire like two laser blasts. The Almost the entire film, he's just standing there. Boba Fett is a character that became beloved purely because how cool his outfit is. That's it. Just on swag factor. Nothing else. He tracks down the Falcon. Barely. He barely does anything. He just looks cool. Most of the movie uh, is just him just dripping out. He's literally just standing there like... Dun, 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 dun. He's just voguing for the camera. That's all he's got, okay? And no spo no no spoilers, but I hate to tell you that that might carry on in the future. No spoilers, okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, K Dash Prime points out Fa uh, Captain Phasma in in the sequel trilogy did more than Boba, literally. I, I, Captain Phasma, another character that they tried to sell entirely on drip and didn't quite succeed on. For those who don't know, um, I'll show you Captain Phasma. I know people aren't as a uh, people aren't as a uh, 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 aware of the new movies as the old ones, but let me show you what Captain Phasma looks like. Okay, um, oh, why does this happen? Here we go. Uh, this is Captain Phasma. Okay. A uh, cool design, definitely a very, very uh, intimidating, uh, like a, 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 a customized stormtrooper. I love the design of Captain Phasma, but they try to do the Boba Fett thing and they just couldn't do it because uh, Boba Fett just he, he outdrips everybody. He he really he just really does. Yep. You'll love how young Boba Fett acts in the animated Clone Wars series. I will be watching the animated Clone Wars series. Don't you worry. Uh, I fully intend to watch the animated, uh, the 3D animated Clone Wars series because uh, I'm very excited for that. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, of course, um, uh, Empire Strikes Back, uh, probably my favorite film of all of the mainline Star Wars films. Um, I really do like Return, but I think that Empire Strikes Back is just the best. It's it's so good in so many ways. It's like, it's got this, it's like burned into my memory for all of the, I think it'll, I think the Hoth battle will be, uh, and will, will still live in my mind for the rest of my entire life uh, as one of the most amazing and ex exciting sci-fi battle scenes that has ever been done. Uh, the movie is has so much swag, uh, and I don't know. It's Star Wars at its best. It is the definitional Star Wars in so many ways. Not that I don't like A New Hope. I love A New Hope. As you guys know, I I was I had a lot of positive things. I loved New Hope, but but Empire Strikes Back really takes everything. It picks up everything that A New Hope laid out and just cranks it up to light speed. And uh, God, it's so good. It's so good. Um, 